If your video transmitter outputs 500 milliwatts and you crank that up to two watts, it makes sense that you're going to get more range. You are shouting louder. Your signal is more powerful. You're going to get more range. That's not literally, a, no one is confused about that. But putting an amplifier on your quad is big and heavy and it adds weight. Uh, it, it sucks up your battery life. Meh, who wants to do that? So people have this clever idea. Well, you can get a receive amplifier and you can have that on the ground and put the amplifier on your goggles. Ha ha, I've tricked the system. I found the loophole. They don't know I know this trick. Yeah, there's, it doesn't work like that though. And here's why. The amplifier is going to amplify whatever signal comes into it. So think about what's coming into your antenna on your goggles. You've got a video signal coming in and let's say that signal is at like negative 90 dBm, like a really weak signal, but still strong enough that it could be received. So you've got that signal coming in. It's being transmitted way up here at, you know, two watts. And it's coming in way down here at negative 90 dBm, okay? And let's say that the noise floor, the ambient background noise, which is always there, think about it. If I stop talking right now, can you hear my air conditioning in the background? Well, I don't know if you can, but think about it. There's always background noise everywhere, right? In, in the RF spectrum, there's always background noise. Now, some places have more background noise than others. Here at my house, if I shut my Wi-Fi network down, probably there would not be a lot of background noise. We might have a noise floor down around negative 115 or 120 dBm, maybe. If I go, you know, in the middle of Manhattan, the noise floor is going to be like negative 60 dBm or something ridiculous because of all that Wi-Fi and, and, and garbage. So let's say my video signal is coming in at negative 90 dBm and my noise floor is negative 95 dBm. What's my signal to noise ratio? It's 5 dB. Now, let's say that that's enough. I got a signal. It's coming in at negative 90 dBm with a 5 dB signal to noise ratio. Now, let's say I feed that into an amplifier. What is the amplifier going to do? It's going to amplify everything. It's going to amplify the signal and it's going to amplify the noise. So the key takeaway here is that a receive amplifier cannot change your signal to noise ratio because it cannot distinguish the signal from the noise. It amplifies the signal, it amplifies the noise. And if you've got a situation where your signal's coming in too close to the noise floor and getting lost, a receive amplifier doesn't fix that. It just gives you a louder signal that you can't tell the signal from the noise. Right? It's like this. Let's say I was in a room, except instead of a nice, quiet air conditioner, I was in like some industrial place with a giant blower fan. And the giant blower fan was so loud that you literally couldn't hear my voice. And I give you a recording. And all you can hear is the fan. And, and I give you a recording of that. And you turn up the volume on the recording. Well, now all you hear is through the fan. You can't, the signal to noise ratio is the same. So receive amplifiers, not the, not the magic bullet that people think it is. Hmm. Oh, now Mr. Fowl's got a good question. Hang on, Mr. Fowl, I'm going to get your question. So what are receive amplifiers good for? Because they do exist, so they must have a purpose. A receive amplifier is useful when the incoming signal has enough signal to noise ratio that it could be discerned, but the receiving circuitry itself needs more power to actually get the signal, which is almost never the case because it's really easy to build a receiver with very, very low internal noise. Okay. 